Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about locomotion in Euglena. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So there are two methods of locomotion in Euglena. First is flagellar movement and euglenoid movement. So first we will talk about flagellar movement. Here flagella contributes in the movement of euglena. Now euglena contains a single long whip-like flagellum which arises from the anterior part of the cytoplasm of its body. So, during locomotion, flagellum is directed backwards. So, please see this picture carefully. This is the euglena. This is the anterior part of the body. And this is the posterior part of the body. Flagella is present in the anterior part of the body. And it is directed backward like this. Now, a series of webs originate at the base of the flagellum. So, this is the base. So, wave arises at this base of the flagellum and it passes to the tip of the flagellum that is backwardly directed. So this is the tip, tip of the flagellum and the wave is transmitted from this base toward the tip and it causes the body to rotate like this. So, how it is rotated, you can see the picture. So, this is stigma. Stigma is the rate point here. This is stigma. So, carefully notice that the position of stigma is changed. So, the position of stigma is rotated. So, it is rotated in the clockwise direction. You just see the position of this stigma, then you can understand. So, the stigma is rotated, that means the whole body is actually rotated. Right? Okay. Now, during the transmission of waves from base to tip of the flagellum, two types of forces generate. Lateral forces and longitudinal forces. So, we can understand that thing here. So, in this direction, the flagella is moving. Now, lateral forces are generated like this. So, here you can see that lateral forces are opposite to each other. Therefore, they cancel one another. Therefore, the euglena will not move laterally. Whereas, this is the longitudinal force. This force is appeared due to the movement of the flagella and this force pushes the water backward in this direction because the flagella is moving in a backward direction and the longitudinal force is also pushing the water backward and 
when it is pushing the water in the backward direction this produces a forward thrust in the opposite direction right longitudinal force and the forward thrust are in the opposite direction and this forward thrust pushes its body forward so the euglena can move here in the forward direction because of this euglena rotates as it swims so it moves forward as well as it rotates so it rotates while it moves it rotates at a rate of 1 turn per second next is euglenoid movement so euglenoid movement is also called wriggling motion or wriggling movement it is a motion like a worm so did you observe how worm moves so this movement is like that now in this motion a wave of contraction passes along the body from anterior to posterior end from anterior to posterior end so this is the anterior end of the body this is the posterior end of the body and at the anterior part here the body starts to contract contraction occurs in this anterior part of the body and it moves this contraction the wave of contraction moves from this anterior part toward the posterior part so observe the picture till this till four so the contraction is moving like that from anterior end to the posterior end therefore the body becomes shorter and wider first at the anterior end then in the middle and later at the posterior end right so if contraction occurs here right at the anterior part of the body if contraction occurs here it will push the body downward right it will push the body because of this body swells like this and this process continues from anterior to posterior part of the body now once contraction moves till the posterior end so now see this picture till the posterior end the contraction is now moved then it starts expansion here so again again expansion will start at the anterior end of the body so we have seen that contraction started from anterior part of the body and it reaches posterior part now expansion is started at the anterior part of the body so wave of expansion now passes along the body like this so from anterior to posterior end now the wave of expansion is passing so you can see here the swelling pattern now changes like that and the animal creeps forward like this so this is the alternate contraction and expansion that helps the body to move so contraction starts from anterior end of the body it passes toward the posterior end of the body then expansion starts at anterior end of the body and passes to the posterior end of the body
and because of this contraction and expansion the shape of the body is changed here and because of this euglena moves forward now the question is how the body gets energy for the locomotion and which part of its body works like muscle during locomotion so we'll see this picture now pelical we know pelical is present in the euglena it is the outermost surface outermost structure now this myonemes are contractile fibers these are some contractile fibrils or fibers which are present below the pellicle in the cytoplasm and it acts like muscle myonin acts like muscle and it helps in the movement of euglena now the energy it requires the energy for the locomotion purpose so where from it gets energy energy means atp it gets atp obviously it gets atp so atp is formed in the mitochondria that we know atp is formed in the mitochondria and mitochondria are present in this case in the blepharoplast blepharoplast is the organ from which flagella arises so in blepharoplast it has some mitochondria where atp is generated and it gives energy euglena to move 